All right, we're going to be doing a uh, lecture today over 1020C, the second part of C, C2. It's going to be over accessories, sometimes called special refrigeration components. We're going to be looking at the uh, both electrical or some electrical and refrigeration accessories. First of all, what is an accessory? Let's compare it to an automobile. You don't need electric windows, do you? No. I think you do. <laughs> but no, it's not a necessity. Okay, the same thing with um, other components on an automobile. The truth is, is, we really don't even need a seat. We could have a bucket, couldn't we? But it's nice to have a good seat. Well, accessories in the refrigeration air conditioning system are very similar. Anything past the seven basic components is considered to be an accessory. Now, I, I will tell you there are some systems that if it wasn't for the accessories on them, they couldn't do the job, but it's still considered to be an accessory. So let's take a look at a few of those items that you may find from time to time in both air conditioning and refrigeration. Uh, components, uh, our, our systems. The first, and we, we, we're going to go, I'm, I'm using, uh, in this particular book, I'm using chapter, or unit 78 as a guide as I go through here. This is fundamentals of uh, HVACR that I'm using. This is uh, one of the textbooks that we use here at the school. Okay, this is a CPR. Now, a CPR is a device that helps keep the compressor from being overloaded during startup or a high load condition. What it does is it limits the amount of pressure that's on the crankcase of the compressor. When, it, when it's adjusted, it has to be adjusted when the compressor is under a full load, a hard load, if you will and you adjust the outlet pressure that is going to the compressor itself. When you adjust it, you adjust it for about 120% of the full load rating of the compressor. Uh, there's always a little controversy about how, what, what if I'm going to overload the compressor? Well, it should not stay in that full load condition that long. The times that you would see that would be after a defrost or someone brings a uh, truckload of new product into a walk-in or something of that nature, okay? All right, CPRs. The difference between a CPR and an EPR, sometimes they're going to look identical. Sometimes they won't. An EPR is this device. And it doesn't look anything like this, I know. But you'll see some EPRs look very similar to this. EPR does just that. It controls the pressure on the evaporator. You will see this used where you have multiple evaporators that are operating at different temperatures. And it does just that. It keeps the pressure from going too low on the evaporator. Okay, let's move on into some other things that we're going to see out there. Um, solenoid valves. Solenoid valves going to come in various shapes and sizes. And I have a couple here if you want to pass that around. You have electric coil that's on top of this one. Uh, you have the valve itself that is uh, going to control the refrigerant. Now, normally, I shouldn't probably use that word normally, but most of the time you're going to see these in a normal closed position. That is when you don't have any power on the coil, the valve is going to be closed. Don't assume that they're always that way. There are some, in some cases, that can be uh, designed to be normally open. In other words, when you put power on the coil, it shuts the valve, not open. You'll see these used, though, the normally closed solenoids on liquid line solenoid valves to where you have what's called a pump down system. Okay? I'm going to pass that around. Little warning, never operate that valve or energize that valve, that coil, if it's uh, not on the stem. It will go up in smoke. <laughs> I don't know a better way to put it than that. Uh, 
check valves, I think, I don't have one out here to show, but a check valve, you'll see check valves in various places through refrigeration air conditioning systems. Can y'all think of one that's real common in air conditioning where you would have a check valve? How about heat pumps? When it reverses the cycle, you have to have something to keep it from going the wrong way at or, or not through the metering device uh, on either end, whether it's in heat or cool. A lot of times uh, the uh, TXV valve or the, or the metering device may actually have a check valve built into it nowadays. It used to always be a separate item, but a lot of companies have, have designed that check valve within the uh, TEV or metering device. But Keep in mind, you will see check valves in other places out there. So just because it's a odd looking valve, don't rule it out as not being important. And I say odd looking, sometimes you, they come in different shapes, sizes, and, and uh, don't always look the same. All right. Uh, believe it or not, you can have hand valves, which is simply some type of uh, valve that can be turned off or, or uh, isolate the system or something such as that. All valves are most commonly used because they have a tendency not to restrict. So don't uh, get alarmed if you see a bunch of hand valves on something. It's just a way of operating or helping service the system. Okay. In fact, service valves are considered to be an accessory. Bottom line. All right, let's get into a little bit of electrical things that we'll see out there. Pressure controls. You can have high, low pressure controls, which is this. The uh, capillary tubes are, have been taken off of here. But you can see this is a dual pressure control, one for both high and low. Here we have a low pressure control, or this may actually be a fan cycling control. Fan cycling would be where you uh, turn the condenser fan off if it, uh, the head pressure gets too low. That actually looks like what the, the, that's what that is. Okay. Another kind of an odd looking creature there. It, that's a uh, oil pressure control. It measures both the oil pressure out of the pump and the low pressure in order to be able to get the net oil pressure. You'll get into that a little later, but for right now that's what it is. Alright, some of the other pressure controls that you may see out there, this is non-adjustable controls. Okay, you'll see those on the suction or, or uh, uh, side or the high side in both cases, uh, depending upon what the, what the switch is to do. Notice the red button on this one. Y'all see that? This one's manual reset. Where would you see something like that? How about on the heat pump? In particular, because if someone has failed to change the filter and it has a condition of high head pressure, then you don't want it to continue to run. It'll, it'll trip that particular switch and it has to be manually reset. Okay. Believe it or not, and I know this sounds kind of crazy, but a thermostat is considered as an accessory. You know, that's, I know that sounds kind of odd, but really, you don't have to have a thermostat. You could have a switch if you wanted to cut it off and on. In fact, some, sometimes I feel like at our house, what we really need instead of a thermostat. <laughs> I, I won't go too far with that one. <laughs> uh, okay. In uh, systems that have to operate year-round, even in when the weather outside is colder than the, the conditions inside, you need low ambient controls. Low ambient controls uh, can consist of many different uh, devices. And I'm going to go over some of those on this chart here in just a minute. But let's finish up the rest of, of what we've got right here, then we'll come back and look at this chart. You'll also have, for safety purposes, relief valves of different sorts. Some work entirely upon pressure. If the pressure exceeds a certain limit, a very unsafe limit, or a, uh, it will release to a predetermined pressure. That's a fail-safe, if you will, last resort. 
There's also some relief plugs that if it gets too hot, they have a solder type plug inside of the relief uh, valve that would melt and release it. Can you imagine when that would come into play? Let's say that you have a fire and if you have that sealed system, it could very well explode if there was not some type of a release there that could allow the pressure to uh, leak out once it exceeds a, a very, very high temperature and pressure. And that's a fail safe. You know, be very careful on that. I hate to talk about things.